Anthony Stennett, and uh, I'm from Athens, Alabama, a small town. Um, just like any of the rest of you, I, I did uh, I did go to church, uh, Baptist. Uh, uh, it was called Mount Nebo, and um, I did get the word now. They planted the word in me. But, yeah. you know, and I'm not trying to say anything bad about any church or anything, but some are tra traditional. And so uh, that's just what I grew up around. I didn't see no power of God, no no Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was only uh, for shouting and dancing and, and all of that, walking benches and all that. So that's all I knew about the Holy Ghost. That's all I knew about Jesus. But I did get the word. And, uh, you know, and, and so... Um, I just grew up like that, but I wasn't really in church. Like mm -hmm. I didn't, re I wasn't really about Jesus. I was more about Nintendo back then. It was, you know, back then we was about the Nintendo and everything. And, and so that's what I really wanted to do. But my mama made me go to church and I hated wearing a dress. I didn't want to wear no dress, but, uh, so I went anyway. And, uh, you know, and, you know, I was just a normal kid. I mean, and, I drew, you know, I liked it to draw. I still like to draw every now and then and everything. But, uh, you know, something happened. I, it was um, like around the neighborhood I was in, there were, you know, the little boys used to pick on me. People picked on me. And so, uh, you know, one time I seen a, a, a guy, you know, use the bathroom. And that's when that thought came in my mind uh, through the enemy. Uh, you want to use the bathroom like that. So I started practicing with, you know, little squirt bottles or whatever. And, and it just seemed like it would have been easier. That that seed started getting planted in me. And the enemy, you know, he he started at me with a young a at a young age. And that's what he does. He'll start with us at a in a young age. Yeah. So uh we definitely gotta come continue to plead the blood of Jesus over our children and pray over our children and plant the word over our children, no matter what it looked like. Um so anyway, uh so like I said, I got picked on a lot and that was one thing and uh, the enemy planting the word and and somewhere along the line in fourth grade, that's I started having an interest in girls mm -hmm. and um, there was one, you know, particular girl or whatever. And and so I just, uh, you know, I used to fantasize about it and everything. And and then the enemy came again and said, you know, she's not going to like you unless you're a boy. Mm. So about from fourth to fifth grade, all the way to sixth grade, I started trying to dress more like a boy. I wanted mm. to be a boy because I wanted girls to like me because that's what he was telling me. Yeah. So I started doing it. I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, like the clothes we had around, it wasn't, my mama wasn't going to buy me no boy clothes. So I got as close yeah. to boy clothes as I could get. Right. And little uh like fake Timberland boots or whatever and back then. And so yeah. I started trying to get as close to a boy as I could. I wanted my hair cut, everything. I mean, it's just what the enemy planted. And um, uh, you know, I still drew. I and then I would look at guys and I would, you know, around those years, you know, the guys are going through, you know, puberty and all that. And I was like, Well, why come I'm not growing no hair on my face? Why come this and why come that i actually yeah. watch a uh, little tv shows uh, and one of them was actually talking about how people are born with both genders or both uh genitalia yeah. and i was like well that must be me i must have been born with a birth defect you know i used to think it was a birth defect i wasn't born with the right parts and all of that and and then i thought i was well i'm just a a boy trapped in a girl's body so i just that just escalated and kept escalating. Of course, my family was against it. They were, uh, they went to church and everything. They just was against it. They didn't believe in it. And, right. um, and so I got miserable. I, I got more and more miserable. And I still tried. I wanted to be a boy as much as I can. I tried to make up the fact that my name was Brian instead of Bethany. And, oh. uh, and so uh, it was just crazy. And so along the line, I was getting more depressed, had crushes on girls and and girls would play like they liked me. And then when I tried to say something, they were like, I don't like you like that. So that kind of tore me down. The enemy was constantly tearing me down. And um, and so in, in about ninth grade in high school, uh, I had a sister. Uh, she started getting really sick. And um, 
we didn't know what was wrong with her. We took her to the Athens Limestone Hospital, but all they said is that she had acid reflux disease and they gave her pills and she was still getting sick, still constantly throwing up. And then finally they took her and got an x-ray of her chest and she had an enlarged heart. This is when I was about, uh, she was 15, so I was about 17. And, uh, and so uh, they were saying that if she didn't get a new heart by a year, then she would not make it. Oh, wow. And so around the year of 2000, at the end of that year, she got really, really sick. Uh, well, at the end of 1999, into 2000, or about 2000, about into 2001, in December uh, of 2000. She got really sick one day. And uh, my mom said they were, you know, they went somewhere. And when they came back, she dropped her pizza. Her mm -hmm. mouth got twisted up. Uh, she was slobbering. Uh, she said, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. We didn't know what was going on. I was at home playing PlayStation. I was a big old right. gamer. So, yeah. but, uh, you know, when she got out the car, she fell out of the car. And uh, we called my granddad. And when the grand my granddad came in the house, he said, that baby done had a stroke. And that's what had happened. She had oh. had a stroke. Uh, her heart wasn't, you know, it was, it was so huge. They said it was pushing up against all her other organs. Jesus. So, uh, so one morning after her being in a hospital, I never went back there to see her because I did not want to see her like that. Um, they said she looked like a machine. She was hooked up to a lot of different things. And, um, you know, and I was trying to believe in God even then, you know, I, I wanted to know God. I didn't know how to have a relationship with God even then. I, I wanted to know him. I remember having some scissors and I glued them together and I said, God, give me the strength. And they bow, they, they broke apart. And so I wanted to have a relationship with God and I, the enemy knew that. And, um, and so my, you know, one morning, I, it was a Monday morning, I was supposed to go to school and um, my aunt called and said, you know, just stay at home today. Your sisters and got really, really sick. Just stay at home. So I did. I went up my granddad's started drawing because I really didn't want to think about what was happening. I didn't want to deal with it. So I just started drawing. And uh, my grandma, somebody called and my grandma picked up the phone and she just heard it. And then when she put it back on the hook, she said, well, it's all over with. And my sister had passed away. Oh, and wow. I got mad at God. Oh. And, and I went down, I was skateboarding. I love skateboarding, extreme sports. So I was, I skated down the road and I looked up and I cursed God. I cursed him to his face. Jeez. And after that, that's when I went down a long road of darkness. I got into heavy metal. I got into, uh, you know, that dark stuff, the dark heavy metal. Uh, my, I had a cousin that lived with us. And he was smoking weed and all of that. And I wanted to try it. And my grand, uh, my, uh, my, my sister's dad, my mom was in love with him. So he had weed and all that kind of stuff. So I wanted to try it. I started yeah. trying it. And at first it wasn't all, you know, it wasn't like people think it is. And then, you know, that's when the pills came. Somebody brought me some Xanax. It's a school. I tried that. Anyway, I just, just was like, okay, there ain't no God. Yeah. He took my sister from me. Uh, you just ain't no God. So I didn't care what was going to happen. I didn't care what I was going to do. So I just started. Uh, it's like it just it, it's just like. I wanted to know what it was about the drugs. Mm -hmm. So they started coming in. People were smoking weed. I started smoking weed. Uh, I wasn't heavy in the pills yet. I was still skateboarding. Uh, I still was having crushes on girls. Still wanted to be a boy would wake up, would pray to God to, to give me a, a male body and would wake up every day with, you know, female stuff. This is how bad it was. And so uh, I got more mad at God because I wasn't waking up what, with what I wanted to have. Right. And I never really got heavy off into the wanting to change my sex or whatever. I was just saying, well, I, if God is this big, he going he gon', to, I'm going to wake up and he going to just have, I'm just have it. Yeah. And, then, you know, I, I didn't see it. So I just that just made me hate God more after my sister passed away. I just didn't want to have nothing to do with God. So I got mm -hmm. into witchcraft. Mm -hmm. I got into, uh, you know, I was 
using the little candles and the incense and the all that different stuff. I wow. I watched the movie The Craft, and um, I wanted to I wanted to do that. I wanted some kind of power, um, and because uh, I I was still getting picked on, people were still making fun of me, and you know, and so I wanted something to I wanted to hurt somebody really because I was just hurting myself, and um, and so it just continued to escalate even at the age of nineteen. You know, I. I started dating a girl and I, I just, I wanted to be known as he, I didn't no longer want to be associated with she. Uh, and people started calling me B and, uh, and I kept it, I guess. And uh, I was in, I was still like, I liked the rap and everything. I was still doing music. I wanted to make my own music. And I was, I was making heavy metal and was talking about, you know, all the stuff I was going through and went through still smoking weed. Uh, I didn't really come heavy until after I graduated school. So uh, I met this guy, his name, uh, well, I ain't going to mention his name, but I met him and, and um, he, uh, we were like best buddies and he thought of me as a boy. And so uh, one day I, we went to Walmart and, and tried to steal stuff. I was stealing like this, like cold medicine. And then somebody told me, if you take about eight of them, it'll make you feel like you're on SP. Well, anyway, I stole them uh, and I took them. And and then somebody later on gave us something to smoke. And we I did that. This was the time at 19 when I was having a near death experience because I had got so messed up that I, I could see, you know, it's like I could see the flame of fire. So I, I knew there was a heaven and hell because I seen the tips ends of them. Oh, wow. And I could see the flame of fire and I, I went into the white light and all that. I mean, it, it was real. And that was my point. That was my stopping point where like, wow, I was like, wow, you know, God must be real. I started trying to believe a little bit, just a little bit. And then st more stuff started happening in my life. So I didn't, um, you know, I, I just kept on doing what I was doing, doing witchcraft, doing all that kind of stuff. And uh, and I and then so uh, anyway, I passed on. I'm gonna pass on by that. And then, like at, uh, a little bit of, at age 20, I met some. I, I got my first job at uh, McDonald. 2004, I got up this little studio. This was before the computers and stuff. And and I made it to where it sounded like you was rapping for real, and you was you was doing it up. People <laughs> would come over, we rap, and then and we do it up. I'd, I'd start that drinking. That's when I started drinking. And mm -hmm. uh, from 19 to 21, when I got 21, I thought I was the thing. I thought I had it going on because I done turned 21. I can go buy as much whatever I want to. Yeah. I can buy my beer. I can buy my cigarettes. I can buy anything. Right. And so I, I thought I had it going on. And I met this guy. And he started coming over every day. Secretly, I was fell in love with him secretly and but he still he looked at me as a guy he was calling me he but he knew you know he knew better well anyway one night uh we were drinking and he had a girlfriend over and and um we were drinking all kinds of liquors and I mixed them together and I drunk it and I wound up passing out in the bathroom and I woke up and there he was so I conceived a child um and I didn't want, I, I was calling it everything but a baby. Uh, I was saying it was a tumor, an alien, everything. I was calling it everything but a baby. And um, I thought, you know, I, I didn't, I just didn't want to believe it because I didn't want to face the reality that I was a female. Yeah. And, um, and so all, uh, I, my belly was getting bigger and bigger, you know, and I finally had to tell my mom. And uh, and then when I had her, I was I was kind of tripped because I thought, well, she's going to come out in parts because even though I kind of knew I was pregnant, but I kind of denied it at the same time I was still drinking. I was still doing drugs, but she came out perfectly fine. That made me believe in God a little bit more because how can I do all of this and she still come out fine? So I was like, this is a miracle. And so I was like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. So I started trying to do right. 
and I started hanging around uh, the the guy that got me pregnant and his girlfriend, and it was like I felt like I was chained to them. It, I knew it was demonic. My mom was a minister, so I had heard some things from my mom, and I began to believe in the stuff she was saying. Uh, and then I, it's like I don't know. I just started experiencing real demonic stuff. I just didn't know, you know. And I was thinking about Jesus. I knew there was something about Jesus, but I just I wasn't there yet. I'll just say that. Um, so I, I I met more and more people, fell in love with, and got crushes on more and more women. Traced one from here to South Carolina. Uh, and I was getting my heart broke because they didn't like me the way I liked them. I wanted to be the man. They started getting other men. I was like, okay, then you go ahead and have her and just bring me beer. So I just was drinking. I was drinking because I was in pain. Yeah, I was in pain. I was depressed and drinking. And, right. you know, um, I'll just say from there to the time I was working at Walmart in 2012, here's when I got into some heavy drugs and and I um, I met some other people and they had the pills. I was doing the pills and, and all of that. And um, anyway, I got around them and they tried to make everything look grand. You know what I mean? They made everything look grand. So I started getting money and they was flipping it. They was flipping the money and, and getting more money. And they made me think, oh, I had it going on. And you bought this truck for us. You bought this trailer for us. So I thought I had it going on. And uh, <laughs> And it was all a lie. But anyway, after that, somehow I, I, I wound up talking to a lady and she was saying, man, you just don't know about this right here. She was telling me about meth, basically. And and um, they were trying to get me to go to the store to get the stuff you need to make it or whatever. And, and so I went and that's when I finally tried meth for the first time and I got hooked on it. It is very addictive. Uh, and I got hooked on it, lost a lot of weight, yes. lying to people, telling them, well, I'm just, start, I don't do carbs and blah, 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 blah. I just lying, just a liar. Mm -hmm. And, 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 uh, so I started living with the, the dealers and there was no more meth around that time. I started hearing the name of Jesus though. I was watching at the time I was watching Tyler Perry, Madea and all of that kind of stuff. You know, he, had some good messages, even though he's a man in a dress, but he had some good messages and he was saying the name Jesus. I knew my mother was praying for me. I knew my mama never stopped praying. And so there was something about that name that really started shaking me a little bit. I'm like, what yeah. is that name? What is in this name? So I started believing a little bit more. It was just like a little bit at a time he would yeah. reveal himself to me. Uh, even though I didn't want to have nothing to do with him when I lost my sister and all of that. He, it's like he was drawing me still. He, it's like it didn't even matter. I could have cussed him. I cussed him out and everything, but he was still drawing me. And um, and so I wasn't able to do the mess like I wanted to do because I was around them. They didn't want me. I was around the dealers and they didn't want me doing that. They just wanted control. It was like a, a controlling spirit, Jezebel kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I was hooked to some more people. I was always getting hooked to somebody and uh, it's a spiritual thing. You know what I'm saying? It's bondage, bondage. And, um, and so I started to pray. I began to pray because I was, it was just, things were just really getting heavy in my life about that time. And I just started praying. And every time I would pray, I would say in the name of Jesus, because I heard Tyler Perry say, if you just say the name of Jesus is a stamp to get the prayer up to his ear. So I started saying it. And every time I would, it's like whatever I was going through, it was lifting off of me. Mm. I started experiencing Jesus. And so my last uh, straw was uh, when I had I had moved to uh, Heflin, Alabama. I moved with the dealers because they were trying to tell me, well, if we go up here, we're going to be we're going to have it made. We're going to have money, blah, blah, blah. Just a bunch of empty promises. And I almost <laughs> believe in it. And because I wanted money. I, I was all about money, too. And and so I moved with them and I had to leave my daughter again. I didn't done it before and I didn't want to do it again, but I did it to make other people's happy. And I'm sitting here miserable, but I was making trying to make other people happy. So I moved there. I got to uh, I got we got to the her brother place. We sat there for a while, talked, all that kind of stuff. Well, anyway, I think it was the next day I looked in their refrigerator. 
and there was liquor and there was beer. Oh, they man. had went somewhere. So it was just me and my own thoughts and me and uh, demonic music. I was listening. I was still listening to that demonic music. And so I started drinking and it's like the enemy was telling me, go ahead, drink some more, drink some more, drink some more. So I started drinking some more. And before you know it, I done woke up uh, and they were calling a place. They were saying, I don't know. They were just saying a, a, a few things. I couldn't really remember everything that they said, but I know it was, uh, they were trying to get me out because I had to destroy some things. I went on a binge drinking the night before I smashed she's out and they had me on camera and and so um they were like well you you got three places to go they said uh you can either go to the woman's shelter you can either go to the, uh get kicked out on the street because my daddy is done with you he don't want to have anything to do with you and then they mentioned another place oh you can go to this place the center of hope uh when i heard that word hope that's what i was like I need that right now. <laughs> and so um, the, that same night, I went to talk to the lady. She was upset with me. She just told me how it was. She told me how horrible of a person that I was. And 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 so I was like, okay, I'm not, that was it. That was the, pretty much the, the, the little thin line that I was hanging on. It broke right there. I went yeah. in the room. I went in a room by myself. It was cold in there. I laid down on the couch. I didn't have a bed there. I just had a couch. So I laid there and I heard a voice audible say, go pray. So I got in the middle of the floor and I, I got on my knees and I started to pray. This time it was different. Tears streaming down my eyes. They were just streaming. And I don't remember the prayer, but I just remember saying these words. I said, Lord, I don't want to be this person anymore. And right then and there is when I felt that flame spark in my heart. I felt it just spark up in my heart. Yes, Jesus. And I knew I'd been changed. I knew something had happened. Ah. And and hallelujah, hallelujah. So uh, I think it was that Monday following, because it was February uh, 7th, which is my birthday. And I think it was that Monday, Mon Monday following, it was uh, Valentine's Day, February 14th. And... Uh, they were taking me to that place. <laughs> when we got there, I was sort of excited because, you know, I was like, man, I get to get away from them, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but anyway, um, I was uh, we was riding like way up a hill. And I'm like, wow, we're just getting closer and closer to God. Anyway, this place is in a Aniston, Alabama. So when I got in there, you know, I was I had my hair. I had my uh, do rag on, had a hat on backwards, had baggy pants on and just boy clothes, boy clothes. And, you know, I had to write all this stuff about what I was dealing with and all that. But anyway, um, I think sometimes they charge like a $200 fee. They mm. told me at that time they was going to waive the fee. That's how ah. I knew it was God. Um, and about at that time I was dealing, I was messing around with some other stuff too. It was called the, uh, the law of attraction. And it was called a secret. Mm -hmm. It was some kind of, um, it was, I don't, I'm not sure exactly what you, what category that fall under, but uh, it was just something else. But they, uh, they used God, you know what I'm saying? They was using scriptures and stuff and they saying you can have whatever you want. They looked at God as a genie. Yeah. They looked at God as a genie, like whatever you want, you can have it. That's the yeah. kind of stuff I was following anyway, but he, he was still using that to draw me in. And so I did. You know, um, so when I got there, I got in the, I finally got in the ladies' house. It was like over, um, it was like over 60 women. Okay. And um, when I got in there, it was, they just accepted me, you know, they accepted me. No, no matter if I was wearing them boy clothes, looking like a boy and everything, they accepted me. They loved me like I was their own. And, and that's what kind of, I was like, okay, I can do this. So you got to kind of meet where people, you know, you got to kind of meet people where they're at. That's right. When it comes to uh, people accepting Jesus, just meet them where they're at and he'll draw them in, you know. Amen. And so um, I was just, I just stayed there and, and I began to read the word. It was all, it was like God had ambushed me, <laughs> you know, because they was calling this a rehab, but it's a discipleship training school. So I got ambushed by God. 
And I started reading the word and I couldn't believe it because when I read it this time, because I had read it in the past, but when I read it this time, I actually kind of understood what he was saying. Wow. And it was, uh, and it was uh, you know, it was, um, it was speaking to me. And, um, and so I, I, I went through that program. And there was times I got in trouble. Yeah. The time that I got in trouble, I was about to get kicked out because I was talking to a girl that I shouldn't have been talking to. And, um, and this was the time when I had to actually put my faith to test or whatever and uh, test test my faith. And I started reading Psalm 62 and I, I was still into rap. I'm still into rap now, but I, I was into rap and, and I started rapping Psalm 62. You alone are my rock. You my salvation, my fortune. Yeah. I could never be shaken. And I started oh, wow. rapping that. Yeah. And um, I just felt a peace come over me Yeah, uh, at this time that I was going to get kicked out. And um and so the the lady that you know the program the program director she invited me up there she was wanting to talk to me about the stuff because they had found a letter that that I wrote to this girl it wasn't like anything sexual it was just I wasn't supposed to be talking we were supposed to be on separation and I was being rebellious that's all it was and so um, anyway she went up there to talk to me and out of me came this testimony on how I got from Athens to where I'm at, where I was at in Aniston and how I got up there and she let me stay. So that was God's grace working yeah. through that lady. And, and so I wanted to do right. You know, um, when I first got there, they was trying to take my boy clothes and I was a little upset about that, Yeah, <laughs> but I really wanted God. You got to really want it. I wanted the Lord. And so I said, okay, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll deal with it. I'll, I'll let him go. I'll let him go. And they gave me girl kind of more, a little bit more feminine clothes. And, and so I, I, I didn't care about it no more. But uh, I got baptized there. Even after I got baptized, the devil was like, well, this is it. This is all you need to do. You don't need to do no more than that. That's when I got in trouble. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, I just stayed in the word. I, I actually got by myself and started reading the word for myself. I mean, they had classes up there. They have the worship praise and worship times and, and classes you can take. And they had the canceling time where you have memory verses and all that. They had all, everything you needed, but I had to draw away from everybody else and go by mm -hmm. my, sit by myself like Moses and um, read the word for myself. And I started mm -hmm. uh, understanding. It's like the Holy Spirit began to speak to me I stayed through that program. I finally graduated. Um, and of course, I was still te uh, tested by the enemy because I still was dealing with homosexuality and being around 60 women was hard, you know. Yeah. But I wanted God so much that in any time that I began to get a temptation or, or whatever, I said, Lord, I, I don't want to, I don't want this, I don't want this. And I kept praying. Every time it would come, I kept praying and praying. And finally, you know. I got put to the test, and that's when it. I knew, hey, I, I don't want it no more. I'm not this person anymore. That Second Corinthians five seventeen. That Come if on, any yeah. man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things Woo. passed away. Behold, all things become new. That's yeah. right. <laughs> and, and so, uh, I remember actually that that night that night that I prayed. I remember laying on the couch, and after I prayed, I actually seen myself in a casket. I said, "Lord, am I gonna die?" And then I heard when I got to that place, I heard that scripture. Yeah, you're gonna die to yourself. <laughs> so uh, you know, I, anyway, I graduated. Uh, of course, the the people that put me there, the enemy tested me with them. And say, okay, we're going to go back to Athens because we just ain't making it here. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I was like, let me finish. Let me finish this. I didn't want to go back with them because I knew that if I would have went back with them, I, it would have stopped where I was at. I wanted to finish something. And so I graduated and the Lord told me to sit down. So I said, sit there eight more months and they let me stay. God has so much grace and mercy. And, um, and so I stayed that eight months and finally God told me to go back home to Athens and I didn't want to go. <laughs> so even coming back home was a challenge. And but the Holy Ghost kept me. I didn't go back to drinking. I didn't go back to homosexuality from even from 2015 
uh, till now, you know, I, I didn't go back to anything. I yeah. wanted more. I wanted more of Jesus. More. Even the times that I came home and up there, it was Jesus, God, and the Holy Ghost all day long. No cussing, no nothing. I come yeah. back in the world, here we go, cuss, cuss, cuss. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, and all these different things that were happening, but God kept me through it all. Oh, and he started pushing me to go out in the streets. And uh, yeah. ever since then, that's that's how it's been. So uh, he delivered me. I don't no longer have the urge for uh, girls or women. I know yeah. that I, I know he's got a husband for me. Yeah. So it's not anything that I did. <laughs> it was all him and the Holy Spirit in me. He he did it, and he's still changing me. You know, it's still changing. Yeah. So, amen. And amen. Yes. That's what I'm doing. Hallelujah. Thank you, <laughs> Jesus. My God. Amen. Powerful, amen. Powerful. Amen. Powerful. I powerful. know you can't hear me, but I'm like, powerful. <laughs> powerful. <laughs> yes. I, amen. Amen. Yes. yes, my God. Y'all, um, y'all see how the Lord can set. He can set anybody free. And like she stated, you got to want it. You got to want it. And she, he was planting seeds along the way. You know, he's not going to just leave you out there because the goal is for you to be free. He said he desires that none shall perish. None. But come to repentance. Amen. But come mm -hmm. to repentance and have everlasting life. So he's, he didn't leave her out there, but he kept on drawing her more and more and more until she surrendered and he put her in positions to, to, um, allow her to grow. It was nobody but Jesus. Like she said, no credit taken for her. It was Jesus. It was mm. Jesus. Amen. Amen. So Amen. Powerful. Um, thank you so much. Thank you for coming on. Oh, amen. This morning. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm, I'm just, and I don't watch you and I'm like, man, she's just so she's just so full of fire. And I'm like, God, give me that kind of fire. <laughs> you know? Oh, and, uh, Oh Jesus, because I don't <laughs> I don't get through stuff too. All glory to go to Jesus. Yes, it's the Lord, it's the Holy Spirit. Well, thank you for having me on, sister. Amen. You know, amen thank you so amen. much. I'm and then maybe do this again in the future. I I'll contact you, okay? Okay, amen. All right. God bless you, sister. God bless you, sister. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Amen. So I'm um, sorry. We was having some technical difficulties for the ones that came on. She could not hear me, but the fact that um, the fact that you guys, the ones that you know was following, I know some just came on, said that they were able to um, hear her. We went ahead and just proceeded because we wasn't not gonna let anything stop this testimony from going forward. If we were able. Hey, where there's a will, there's a way. I'm not sure if y'all ever heard of that. God bless you, Sister Christian. Bless you so much. Uh, but if there's a will, there is a way. And so I'm amazed at the fact that she said, that's right, Miranda, who the son sets free is free indeed. He, Jesus ain't going to come and do no halfway thing. He ain't going to come and just play a, games with you. He's coming to set the captives free. He didn't come to play with Satan. He didn't come to play with sin. He didn't come to play with sin. He said, we're no longer enslaved to sin anymore. When Jesus is involved, we're no longer enslaved to sin. It's by choice, you know, because when, when you want to be free, Jesus would give you the grace to empower you to overcome that thing. That's the grace that's given to the ones that truly want to get free. And so the thing is, you have to get to a place where you're broken. You have to get to a place where God, I need you. You have to get to a place where you hate your sin. You hate the situation that you're in. And so that's why he said he resists the proud. Because when you're in your sin and you don't think nothing's wrong with what you're doing, you're prideful in what you're doing. You're thinking what you're doing is right. You're thinking what you're doing is the way. And I'm not saying this to come down on anybody. That's why, Sister Veronica, we overcome Revelations 12, 11 by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. It testifies that the blood of Jesus still works, that the blood would never lose its power. It testifies. Like I always say in the revelation God gave me, you cannot have a testimony without the blood of Jesus because it's through the blood of Jesus we are set free. 
Amen. And you cannot have the blood of Jesus in your life and don't have a testimony. Catch that. So you got to have both because it testifies. Your testimony testifies that the blood of Jesus works. So we got to testify. I don't care if you keep repeating the same testimony over and over like me. I tell my same testimony over and over on social media. I'm pretty sure people know it by heart now. But I don't care because it's constantly new people that are seeing it, new followers, and they need to know the saving power of Jesus Christ. If I got to sound like a broken record for somebody to get free, bless you, Brother Joy Robertson. God bless you, Brother Um Adriana, a couple people I see that's on here that's watching God. Thank you all for your support and jumping on. But I'm telling you, that's saving power in Jesus Christ. There ain't nothing nobody can do about it. There's nothing that Satan can do to condemn you. Because once he sets you free, there is nothing he can do about it. There's no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. We talk about people who are walking after the spirit of God. Walking after the spirit of God, the Bible says those that walk by the spirit of Jesus of God, those are the that's they they are the sons of God, the ones that's walking by the spirit, amen. And I want to share this with you guys before I get off of here because I've dealt with a phase of my life of uh, dealing with homosexuality, and I, and I I never really just told this like that because it's it's something that I just I'm still trying to like. I wasn't even saved um, when I had my encounter. I um, I knew about God. Um, my sister Bethany said, when you grow up in a home or you grow up around a Christian family, they plant seeds in your spirit. So mothers, don't feel like you are not doing anything. When you're planting seeds in your children, I don't care if it seems like they're not listening. You're planting things. You're planting them seeds in their spirit. So, you know, the Bible says train the child up in the way that they should go. And so when they get older, they won't depart from it. So even if it looks like they're fading away, they're going this way, there is something in them. It's a seed planted in their spirits. So I come to tell you this. That's it. No more willful sin. It goes out the window. You live to serve Jesus. You breathe to serve Jesus. Every day he said you die daily and nobody said it was gonna be easy nobody said it wasn't gonna be rough but when your heart postures changes when you set your things on things above and not beneath it's easier to walk after the spirit it's easier because you seek out to please jesus you seek out to do that will of God. You seek out to do that, the works that he had for us to do from the foundations of, he been he had works for us to walk in from the foundations of the world. He been wanting us to walk in holiness since the beginning. What we got to do is once we, we born again, regenerated in the faith, we got to walk in that thing. We got to walk in what God had already predestined for us to walk in holiness, our purpose, my God. So what we're doing is we just walking that thing out. We're working our salvation out. Yes, we're fear and trembling, holding fast on that thing uh, that Satan can't come against you. Satan can't snatch you away. You got to stay in him though. He said, if you abide in me, I will abide in you. But if you don't abide in me, you are therefore cast off, cut off, and thrown into the fire. Uh, my God. So we got to stay in Jesus. We got to abide in Jesus. We can't let go of his unfailing hand. You got to make a choice every day that I'm going to walk after the things of the spirit and I'm going to crucify my flesh. That's the choice. That's why you have to be a disciple of Jesus. It's so much deeper than just church. It's so much deeper than just religion. It's so much deeper than just that I'm a Christian. You have to have a disciple mentality. Hallelujah. And so let me tell you this before I get off of here, because like I said, in the phase of my life, I dealt with a homosexual encounter. Now, like she said, Satan comes along the way throughout your life, starting from the time that you are born into this world. From the time that you are born into this world, Satan is after your soul. Hear this, and I want y'all to hear me well. Satan is after your soul. And we'll get ready to pray. Satan is after your soul. There are dark forces. There are demonic agents that are set in the side to your life. There's a kingdom of God and there's a kingdom of Satan. You know, he duplicates everything that God does. He's a, he du he's a duplicator. You know, 
He does the knockoff brand. He does the fake. He does the great value brand from the grocery store, if you feel me. But God is real. He's just and he's, he's sovereign. He's, he's, he's almighty over everything. Nothing can beat him. You make it try to duplicate your demonic witchcraft powers, but there's nothing greater than the power of Jesus Christ. There's nothing greater than the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That's why all these witchcraft worship. So as a child, you are under attack. That's why some children, we 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 was y'all, we went through the molestation. We went through the, the rape. We went through the spirit of rejection. We went through the spirit of abandonment. We went through the spirit of, of, of dealing with lust because we allowed pornography to enter in through a friend who showed us things. That was attacked on you from the beginning to tank your spirit. From the beginning. You was once a pure child. You had no idea of none of this filth, none of this sin. But as you go through life, there will be attacks. And so what we do is we grow up. We have all this stuff, all this seeds, all these spirits we, we take on. And so Satan's goal is to keep you from finding Jesus. Satan's goal is to keep you in a dark place. His goal is to drag your soul to hell with him. But as we know, Jesus has a different goal. He said he desires that none should perish. But Satan desires that all should perish if he had his way. And so I get to the point of I dealt with the spirit of rejection from the time that I was a baby. Because I hate to say it, I love my daddy, daddy nearly. And we're, uh, we're coming back together. Uh, hallelujah. Praise Jesus for that. We're coming back together. But when I was a child, I, 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 he, he left so I dealt with the spirit of rejection as a child. I never had my father in my life the way that I always desired. So I grew up with wanting a love of someone to accept me and love me the way that I thought that I should be loved. So after going through several breakups, this last breakup at the age of about, I would say 22. I could be a lot off. This last guy, I put all my trust in him. I, I, I gave up a lot for him. I allowed him, allowed him to come into my home uh, as he pleased. Catch me here. <laughs> my God, it's going to take the Holy Spirit to help me tell y'all this. He broke my heart. He cheated on me. That rejection spirit just, he just wild. Mm. And it just made so much room for another spirit and another. You get, you just seem like you keep going down. Check this out. At the time, I had a friend living with me. At the time, she was battling also with homosexuality. I wasn't into it, you know, I was dating men. But she was. So I invited her in my home, and she began to bring that particular type of people around. Uh, she began to bring people uh, that were homosexuals and lesbians and whatnot. Amen. And so one of the young ladies had her eye on me at the time I was dealing with that boy. And I uh I knew she was trying to send those subliminal signals. She sent me flowers to my job um anonymously, but I knew it was her because it ended up coming out. I was like, okay. I didn't know what to do. I was like I know this ain't right. It, it, does, it didn't take the Bible for me to know it wasn't right. I just know it wasn't right. We have, but the Bible talks about us having a conscience. We, we have a conscience of right and wrong anyway, right? Um, so I knew, like I said, but she weighed me over with all the gifts and the monetary things. And I ended up um, slowly, the enemy kept pulling me. You know, she kept coming around, just kept pulling me and pulling me and putting things in my head. Well, maybe she can love you. Maybe, you know, she could be that person. Maybe, you know, how, the, how they say love is love. This, this, is, this is deception of the enemy to get to me. And uh, long story short, I ended up slowly but opening up to her, talking to her, uh, start giving her those midnight uh, hugs and stuff, a uh, good, good night kiss. And I was like, oh, my God. I, I knew it. I felt I knew it was wrong. I was like, I bet this is not right. So I ended up going full-fledged with her at one point. I just said, bump this. I'm going to go ahead and open up to her. Um, we had a sexual encounter, okay, y'all? And it was a, a soul tie type of connect right then and there that I got myself wrapped up in spiritually that um, 
it, it, I knew it was going to be hard for me to get out of it because I opened myself up to that demonic influence uh, sexually. And there's nothing worse than sexual sins because you sin against your own body. The Bible talks about sexual sin, you know, being one of the most worst sins because you sin against your own body. Now, when I did that, um, there was some chaos that began to arise. I, I, I you know, with us both being females, you know, we, we started not getting along on some situations. So I was like, okay, this is becoming too much for me. So I wanted out. I was like, I can't do this. She a woman, she hormonal, and so am I, I know. So anyway, the point I'm getting to, I went to sleep one night. I knew nothing about the deep depths of demonic entities and uh, all these influences of demonic forces. But God is so good because he knew the calling I had in my life. He knew. I went to sleep. I had a dream. And in this dream, it was so dark. It was just so gloomy, dark. And you can feel the, the, the sadness. You can feel like the weariness of the dream, the way it looked. It was so dark and gloomy in the way it felt. In this dream, I remember going downstairs. The time I had stairs, it was in my apartment at the time, just like it was. Like it was real. I went downstairs and it was a guy sitting there watching TV. And I was remember sitting, I sat down on the couch and I felt so miserable in the dream as, as if I was so trapped. And somebody knocked on the door. And so I went to the door to open it. And it was a person out there trying to help me come out. They, they had their hands reached for me. And I tried to grab their hands to pull me out of the apartment. I guess that was an interpretation of me trying to get free in the spirit. Because at the time I told you I was getting like really weary and I was getting frustrated. Because I knew it was not right. I knew I'm like, what I got myself into. So in the dream, that person was trying to pull me out. They grabbed my hands and my feet would be, was like in the air. Because that man got up and stood behind me and had his hand like this behind me. Like, like he had this demonic power that I couldn't move. So even though I grabbed the person's hand, my feet was dangling in the air. Because it was like a force that wouldn't... He, he had me like this. He didn't have to touch me. He just had me like this. So my feet in the air. I'm in, literally in the air in the dream holding this person's hand and the door slammed. Boom. So I'm still in this miserable dream. Then the scene switched. Then we in the bed. The same man. Then it had the girl's face that I was dealing with. It switched. Like, you know how dreams do it. It had her face. But in her body, she had like her breast, but then her uh, genital area she had like a man's part but she had woman up here her face and it, it was so confusing i found out later that that's the demon of is it uh, the baphomet demon which is the demon that has both genital parts it's a demon that's a demon Ooh, i hope i don't cry because i'm so 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 thankful so it was a demon I found it out later, like I said. Um, so the demon was on top of me and was trying to have sexual intercourse. And in the dream, I was just so miserable because I, I in the dream, it was like I didn't know how to get out. I didn't know how to, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't have a relationship with God at the time. But it was something in me. I was like, oh, this is wrong. And so after this bathroom demon, pretty much with both parts over me, it shifted, and I was walking into my kitchen, and I saw my mother. My mother was in my dream and she had like this light around her this light and I, I um interpreted that was Jesus that was God speaking through my mother he was in a familiar form but she was sitting there with so much glow around her and the girl was doing the girl was doing her hair with just a, a scenery and she was sitting up there and I went in there I said mom I said I don't know what to do My mama, I didn't know what to do. Um, my mama didn't know I was dealing with this at the time because I had allowed myself to get open up to that because of my hurt to a man. And I was like, she was doing all this stuff and I knew it was wrong. And so my mom said, well, you know what to do. She said, you know what to do. And I know it wasn't speaking. I know it wasn't her because it was a slight. She said, you know what to do. So I got on my knees and I put my hand on my mama knees like leaning over on her knees and I'm just like crying in a dream like, I don't know what she said you know what to do she said you need to pray like I said I didn't grow up in church I I didn't have that solid relationship but when those seeds are planted in your children my grandmother was a praying woman <laughs> so I knew enough 
I had faith the size of a mustard seed. I knew enough to pray. So she said, she said, you know what you need to do. She said, pray. You need to. So in the dream, I started praying. And that man, that demon, came behind me. He just started screaming. The dream. He was like screaming like hysterically. He was like, ah, uh, like as I was praying, he was like, ah, uh, like he couldn't stand me praying to Jesus. He started screaming like he wanted me to hush. And I kept praying the dream. I kept praying the dream. And all of a sudden, he just disappeared. And I woke up. I got my phone. I text her, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. She was like, well, I can't. That's your lifestyle, but that one for me. See, Satan had plans to sift me as wheat. He knew that one day I was going to be preaching this gospel. He knew that God had anointed me to go and set the captives free. He knew. So the enemy knows the plans. He, he knows you got purpose. He knows you got purpose. And so what he do is he tries to stop you before you even get there. Or he'll try to stop you while you're there. So brothers and sisters, I've been there. I've been there too. Confused, I allowed myself to fall victim. But I thank the Lord that even when I was in my sin, He came and got me. He came and got me. That dream was my wake up. That dream was God saying no. That demon revealed himself. It was the demon of Baphomet. So I'm telling y'all who's dealing with that lifestyle, I'm saying this from my heart. That's that's a demon. That's a spirit. And if you could only see behind the scenes of what you're dealing with, you wouldn't even want to do it. And I know a lot of people do because they're hurt, rejection, confused. They've been molested. They've been raped. They're, they're just trying to deal with the hurt. They're just trying to feel accepted. And so they turn to whatever they feel that that's going to do it for them. You'll turn it to someone else. You'll do what you have to do to try to cope with life. But I'm telling you, there is life in Jesus. It's not worth your soul. Don't give access to these demons because they need a vessel. They need a body. They need a body to fulfill their filth. They are demonic and they pervert it. So they twist the things of God. God never created us to sleep with the same sex ever. I don't care what nobody say. And even when I was in my mess, God came and woke me up. I wasn't even where I'm at now. That was years ago. My God. <laughs> I didn't even know. But I thank God I cut it off there. That scared me. That was enough for me to be like, I can't do it. So I'm telling you, I'm crying out for so many people in the LGBT community. It's a, it's a whole other different world with that lifestyle. Whole other different world. Whole other different lingo. Everything is different. You can feel the spirit that just surrounds that, that community, that lifestyle. When I went I went out with her, the girl who was looking at me at the time. I went out to this gay club with them. And you can feel, you can feel the difference. I'm talking about it's a whole other different ball game. But when you come out that thing, you can you can see. You can see. It was a setup. So come out of that thing. Don't let these demons trick you into saying, oh, you was born like this. You're supposed to be this way. Because God came in my dream and said, I got a calling on your life, evangelist. Satan was trying to go ahead and take me out the game. But I'm not afraid and I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of my testimony. So I'm telling y'all with tears going down my face because I was not saved. But yet I still had a dream on what I was dealing with. So please, if you got any family member that's dealing with this, please. It ain't natural, and it is it is demons. We, you're, they are dealing with spirits, and I'm not saying they all uh, want to be in that situation, so to speak. You know, some have been through stuff that been seeds 
planted in their spirits and now they're battling. Like me, I was, I had, I wouldn't, I never wanted to, you know, but the moment it was a season of my life that Satan came in and I allowed him to infiltrate me. And so after that, I began to move forward from that. And later on, I ended up getting born again, filled, saved, Holy Ghost filled. And now I, I'm reaching back. Now I'm telling people about the goodness of the Lord. Lord is using me. And I warn because I love. I warn because I don't want to see no one perish behind the lies of the enemy with the sins that we so enjoy that it's not of God. There's a spiritual battle going on for your soul. We don't war against flesh and blood. It is so much deeper than what we can see as the manifestation of the seed that was dropped in your spirit since you was a child. Confusion. Hallelujah. But I pray on tonight. I pray on tonight, God, that souls will begin to get set free on tonight just from listening to this broadcast, God. Pierce their hearts, Lord Jesus. Cause them to turn away from their wicked ways, God. Save them from the hands of the enemy, Lord Jesus. We're praying for the entire LGBT community, God. We're praying for the people that are battling and struggling with this spirit, God. We're praying right now, God, that you show them their true identity, Lord Jesus. We're praying right now, God, that you give them the grace, God. Grace them to turn away, God. Grace them to turn away, God, from the things of the enemy, God. We pray against that demonic spirit of Baphomet, God. We pray against the spirit of perversion, God. We pray against the marine spirit, God, the water demonic mermaid spirits from out of the kingdom of Satan, God, that are sexual, enticing, seductive demons that have entered into these people's lives, God. We uproot every demonic assignment, Lord, that's been set out to kill and destroy the plans that you have for everybody that's watching this live lord jesus we pray that you touch their hearts on tonight god and that they cry out to you lord to deliver them lord jesus hallelujah to deliver them god for you said that that's what you came for in the name of jesus you didn't come to condemn the world but you came to save it hallelujah you came to save us from our sins god and that does not mean to stay in it but you came to show us we can be free through you jesus you came to grace us to get free god hallelujah it's not of our own God, but it's you that's showing us the way. You are showing us the way, God. And we thank you, God. Touch everybody, Lord, that's watching this, Lord, and that will watch it, Jesus. Hallelujah. We rebuke you, Satan, with your lies. We rebuke you. We cast down every thought, Lord Jesus. Everything, God, every thought, every wicked imagination, Lord, that exalts itself against the word and the knowledge of you. We bring it into captivity, oh God. We imprison those thoughts. Uh, we throw away the key, God. Uh, and we ask right now, God, that you move in their spirits, God. Uh, have their beings, God, in the name of Jesus. We're praying for surrenderance, oh God. Uh, surrender on tonight. Uh, it's not too late to surrender. Uh, surrender your lives on tonight. Uh, draw near to the Lord and he will draw near to you. Uh, repent of your sins. God said you will turn from your wicked ways. He said, humble yourself. Return from your wicked ways. Then I will heal your land. Then I will heal you. I will restore you. I will replenish you. I will show you who you are if you come to me. If you come to me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Touch them, Lord. Touch the lost, Lord. Everyone that's battling with something, depression, suicide, thoughts, uh, we counsel and we destroy the negative thoughts that sit from Satan. Uh, in the name of Jesus, God, uh, we sever the cord, Lord Jesus, of ungodly soul ties, God. Uh, we renounce every type of dealings with witchcraft uh, and demonic behaviors, God. Uh, we renounce it. We denounce everything, God, uh, that is not like you. We repent of our sins. Uh, we give ourselves to you, God. Uh, we ask right now that you come into our hearts, uh, we want to be born again. All you got to do is cry out to the Lord and say, God, I want to be born again. I want your spirit. Come live in me. Have my being. Use me how you want to use me, Lord. All you got to do is say, God, I want you. I want you more than anything in this world. Cry out to him on tonight. Cry out, Abba Father, on tonight. Hallelujah. And it will be done. He said, if you confess your sins, he is faithful 
If you confess your sins, he is faithful to forgive you. It's all on you. It's all on you. How bad do you want it? So I just want to share that with you guys. A little bit what happened to me. My experience. I ain't always been this way. I ain't always been perfect. I have had my struggles. And I just want to tell you about it so that you can have hope, so that you know you can overcome. And so that you can see that what God revealed to me, that that definitely was a Baphomet demon. That was a demon. It was revealed. Okay? So be encouraged, y'all. Stay on the lookout for Satan, you know. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Watch yourselves. Even when you get free, watch yourselves. Watch yourselves. Stay steadfast. Continue to fight the good fight of faith. Because he wants to draw you back too. Keep yourself filled up with the word of God. That's how you stay driven. You got to stay filled. Stand on his word. If you have nothing else to stand on, his word his word all right i love you all no matter how many people say i'm too hard <laughs> with the word of god I, I truly love people and i have a passion for souls and so i gotta i gotta give the truth no matter what i've been through no matter what my past is was i gotta give you the truth and you gotta repent from your sins and turn from them or else you will not inherit the kingdom of god is written you will not inherit and i know people don't want to hear this but i have to tell you you have to turn from them amen so anyway until next time <laughs> y'all be blessed